following is an HCPSS TV special presentation. Hi, I'm Brian Bassett with the Howard County Public School System. Welcome to HCPSS Insight. Today, we're going to discuss the career and technology education offerings in our schools, particularly those offered in the Applications and Research Laboratory. Career and Technology Education, or CTE, offers courses to students in both middle and high school and prepare them for the path that lies ahead, whether that's continued education or entry-level employment. The career academies found in the Applications and Research Laboratory, or ARL, offer high school students a unique opportunity to prepare for college and careers. Each career academy offers a recommended sequence of courses, internships, and projects related to students' career goals, and the opportunity to earn college credits and industry certification while still in high school. But before we jump into our first conversation about the CTE offerings in Howard County, Let's look at one opportunity happening at Centennial and Hammond High Schools where students are doing some amazing work in robotics. So there's this league for robots called FIRST. Every January they release this game and teams like us, uh, usually based in schools, have to build a robot to compete in the game. So our team right now, uh, we mostly meet at Hammond, but we're combined Hammond and Centennial High School. So that's what we're doing right here, right now, as we're building the robot to compete in the game. I walked into this team with absolutely no technological knowledge, and now in my senior year, I can tell you anything you wanted about you know pneumatic systems or how gearboxes work. I could probably rebuild a gearbox if you asked me to. Any engineer could learn what's in the textbook all the torques and the physics that goes behind it. But when it comes to reality, what does that mean? How do I apply this information that I learned into a real situation? How do I design something using the information I've learned? So it's taking what you learn in the classroom and applying it to a real world situation. It's really gotten me to love this whole, here's a problem, design a, pro a solution to the problem and implement that solution. And that whole process that we do in robotics is something that I really like and you know through robotics it's really uh, solidified my knowledge of what I want to study in college. Behind the, this robotics team the idea is just to train engineers for the future. While sure we'd like to build a robot and sure we'd like to win competitions with said robot, we want to make sure that education comes first. You'll come, you'll have a great time and you'll learn in this awesome nurturing environment where you know you're always welcome to ask questions and you basically get to learn everything that you want to learn about the awesome process that is building, prototyping, and making a robot. Today we will welcome two panels of guests in studio to talk about career and technology education and career academies. On my first panel, I welcome Sharon Kramer from the Office of Career and Technology Education and Cami Wagner, Instructional Facilitator for School Counseling and Related Services. Thank you both for joining me today. So Sharon, let's start with this. What is career and technology education? Well, career and technology education here in Howard County has a very broad definition. Okay. So I'll start at the high school level. Good. At the high school level, we offer 20 different career academies for the students. We have eight academies that are available at the home schools, mm -hmm. and we have 12 academies that are available at the ARL, which is our tech center. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also, um, are responsible for offering the Tech Ed graduation requirement as required by COMAR. And in one final area at the high school level, we also offer an advanced tech sequence as a graduation pathway. That's at the high school level. Then at middle school, we are responsible for the engineering and technology education courses, okay. as well as the family and consumer science courses. So these are, these are opportunities in, in every high school and middle school. That's correct. And the AARL. If, if That's more. correct. 
That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about the, the ARL, the mm -hmm. Applications and Research Laboratory, um, and, and there we find career academies. What are career academies? Career academies are defined by the state of Maryland and their programs of study. There is sequential study that leads to a deep understanding in the area of the technical certifications and as well as the academic. It's the technical and the academic mm -hmm. study on that. <laughs> and Cami, when we think about the career academies, and really when we think about preparing students mm -hmm. for life after mm -hmm. high school, what are the benefits to participating in a career academy? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a it's an opportunity to focus on a particular area of interest, um, and for many students, it's helping them to either rule in or rule out a particular mm. area of interest. Um, so it it allows them to get more deep into an whatever they're interested in studying. Yeah. Um, most of our students take it for two years, but some students might only take it for one or some of the programs are up to four years. So it's just a good opportunity to experiment and get some additional exposure. Are, are the counselors in our middle and high schools uh, helping students mm -hmm. realize what's available and, mm -hmm. and, and even help that interest? Mm -hmm. I think we're trying. Yeah. Um, we're lucky because we have so many programs um, and they're all a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I would say if, if a student or a family have an interest, definitely go talk to your counselor, talk to teachers, um, if you're in a high school in particular or in a middle school, um, talk to your teachers about what opportunities are out there so that we can help narrow students' interest and mm -hmm. kind of hone that in. But there's also opportunities for students to come visit the academies. Mm -hmm. That's a good, a good way to see. Uh, I think I might be interested in this. Oh, Let me go spend a day and see if it is really what I think it is. Yeah. And in addition, we mm -hmm. have a, a week-long summer camp. If mm -hmm. the students are interested, yeah. we invite them to enroll in our summer camp to be able to explore one of our career academies in more depth. And that's available to students of what age? A middle school. Oh, middle, mm -hmm. Any middle school students. And, mm -hmm. right. That's great. That's fantastic. I remember them running around here in their multicolored shirts. This, exactly. This summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrific. Um, Sharon, we had, um, we did, we did um, offer our community opportunity to send in questions. We had a couple come in. Mm -hmm. So this one came in from a parent of a middle school student. And, mm -hmm. and you touched on this a little bit, mm -hmm. but let's make sure we get their question answered. How are students in middle school, what opportunities are there for students in middle school around CTE? Well, as I mentioned, CTE does have uh, two courses in the middle school. We offer our engineering um, and technology education course, mm -hmm. and they uh, study the engineering design process in that, and they can explore their interest in pursuing engineering in high school. We also have our family and consumer science course where they can explore their interest in uh, possible culinary or uh, other related areas. I did mention that middle school is there too for all students. Yeah. And I believe Kami could describe the module that we have that's focused in career education. Mm -hmm. The careers module in sixth grade, mm -hmm. that's the one? Yes. That one's a required one that all of our students participate in. Oh, okay. um, so they will get some general exposure. exposure. Um, they're gonna use Naviance mm -hmm. to um, do some exploring. Um, and then the other ones are optional, mm -hmm. right? They're available to all students, mm -hmm. but they're not required for mm -hmm. all students. So students need to, you know, uh, alert their counselor that they're interested in the other um, programs in the um, culinary and engineering. Okay. Yep. And Cammie, there we had another question come in mm -hmm. um, from a parent, and it looks like it's, this is a middle school parent mm -hmm. as well, and it looks like their child is um, is participating in a lot of extracurricular mm -hmm. clubs, programs around mm -hmm. coding and programming mm -hmm. and awesome. developing those skills. How can they take what they're doing and learning in those extracurricular opportunities mm -hmm and eventually, if not mm -hmm. immediately, turn them into uh, credit opportunities mm -hmm. um, or real world experience opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a couple course sequences that are related to that. So I would talk to the counselor about which specific academies might feed into the coding. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely say that's something that you wanna take with you in job um, applications. Uh, resumes, even college applications and interviews. Um, those are skills that are portable and you can use in a wide variety of fields. So continuing to build those skills is really important and you can do that through the academies, mm -hmm. but also making sure um, those who you're interviewing with know that you have those skills because you can use them in many different ways. Yeah. I'd like to add to that answer. I mentioned that we do, we are responsible for the tech ed graduation requirement mm -hmm. as defined in COMAR for the state. We have two specific computer science classes that mm -hmm. the state has identified 
that will uh, satisfy that TechEd graduation requirement. And both of these uh, came to us through a national organization called Code.org, and yeah. I would love to talk more about that at some point. Would you like to talk about it now? Oh, I can. Let's do, let's okay, do it. Okay, well, the two <laughs> classes that satisfy the TechEd graduation requirement um, that relate to coding are our Exploring Computer Science class, which is okay. offered at an honors level, and the brand new Computer Science Principles AP class. College Board has just set up that class to run full-time this year, and the first AP administration for that exam will take place this May. We're very excited about the opportunity. We have almost 2,000 students taking one of those two classes to satisfy their TechEd graduation requirement. So if they're interested in computer wow. science from middle school, I encourage them to consider one of those classes to satisfy their graduation requirement. And those classes are offered in all 12 high schools? Yes, they are. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're only one credit classes as opposed to the academies that are mostly four credit or mm -hmm. five credit. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested and want to get started or don't have the room in your schedule to fit in four or five classes, you can definitely get some more in those one credit classes. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's mm -hmm. a good opportunity. Yes, it is. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Cammie, um, are career academies preparing students um, for a career or are there more pathways than just career mm -hmm. academies? Mm -hmm. I think most of the academies, and Sharon could probably speak specifically, most of the academies are preparing you for a technical assessment and a certificate that you can have at the end of the academy. Mm -hmm. So you can, in many cases, enroll right into um, the community college that we have a lot of articulated agreements with and mm -hmm. you've already earned mm -hmm. some credits. Um, or y in, in some of them, you can go right into work. You can start um, while you're in school or while you're continuing your education, you can start in one of those technical fields. Um, so th I think they're <laughs> great opportunities for kids to get a head start. Yeah. Sharon, so, so let's talk about um, the CTE programs um, beyond those that they're taking in their schools that are the required courses. How do students enroll in an academy or any other opportunities that, that are out there related to CTE? In the high schools, f specifically for the career academies, they, they work with their guidance counselor mm -hmm. and they simply register for the classes. Mm -hmm. We do not have an application process in this county. We want to make the, this available to all of our students. And the same is true for the Tech Ed graduation requirement classes, but I'm just mm -hmm. trying to focus right now on the yeah. uh, career academy. And can students from any high school participate in the career academies offered in the ARL? Yes, they can. Great. Exactly. It's our tech center, so we, and, we, and the way we have it set up with the central location, we're able to pull students in. They're, the students travel on bus to their home high school, but then they take an ARL bus over here to take the classes. They return to their home high school, so they can fully participate in all activities at the home high school. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Cami, we have um, our second panel coming up today is, is three folks from the AR, ARL Academies, mm -hmm. they had their programs. And I want to ask them this question, but mm -hmm. I want to ask you this question too, because mm -hmm. this I, I know is something you're passionate mm -hmm. about. And, and in these academies, we're preparing students with, with skills in a certain area, whether mm -hmm. it's cybersecurity or, or building construction, engineering, those mm -hmm. sort of things. Um, but there's a lot of other skills mm -hmm. that they're attaining mm -hmm. in these programs. What are some of those, we've called them soft skills mm -hmm. in the past, what are some of those things that they're taking away from these opportunities? Mm -hmm. I, I'm fascinated to learn um, what, what they're doing here because they are taking the time to focus on um, how to get a job, how to um, build relationships, how to network. Most, uh, almost all the students who are in the a ARL academies here and in most of the academies at their home schools also, they're required to do an internship. Mm -hmm. So they're going out and actually interfacing with adults in the working world, building relationships, creating resumes, doing practice interviews, um, all those skills that in our math and English and science and social studies classes we'd love to be teaching, but because we're teaching the other content, it doesn't fit as naturally into the curriculum. So here our teachers are doing a fantastic job helping the kids navigate the working world um, in addition to learning the skills required to do whatever field they're, mm. they're learning about. Mm -hmm. Sharon, it, it sounds like to get into a career academy is mm -hmm. It's a process. There's an application mm -hmm. process. No, they're prerequisites. They, well, they, well they, re they register with mm -hmm. their guidance counselor for the class. Okay. There may, you might have some simple uh, prerequisite, like the students should take studio art if they're interested in coming mm -hmm. into our art okay. academy, as opposed to another fine arts. Good. Thanks for clearing that but up. It, it, but it's nothing set up to uh, 
prevent anyone from registering mm -hmm. for the academy. Okay, but it is a commitment it that is. they make. What if they get in and don't like it? They have the, well, they have the opportunity, of course, to, to change. Not mid-year, you know, there's a, mm -hmm. a point in the school year where you can't change your classes, but certainly if they want to switch to another academy or simply uh, not enroll in an academy at all, that's fine. It's mm -hmm. up to them. They have to keep in mind, though, that they need a graduation pathway. Mm -hmm. And so if that is their sole graduation pathway, they will have to work with their counselor to identify another graduation pathway. Counselors seem to play an important role here, mm -hmm. Katie. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. Yeah, <laughs> but I think they, um, I think they understand how great these opportunities are as well and want to help kids allow them to follow their paths of interest. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, they definitely play an important role. So if you have questions, I would start by talking with them. And what if their path of interest isn't offered in the ARL mm -hmm. or even in, in the schools? What, mm -hmm. what can they do? to pursue that path of interest. Yeah, so one of the things I would do is be sure that it's not offered. Because even though okay. our academies have labels and it seems pretty clear what their intent is, I think the internship opportunities allow the students in their second year, usually in their senior year, to branch out a little more than what is right on paper. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't, if you don't see it written there, I wouldn't just stop. I would ask questions and make sure that you've ruled out Mm -hmm. that the academy mm -hmm. isn't an opportunity for you. Um, but I would also say getting out there and finding jobs, um, finding other opportunities. Um, our GT Intern Mentor Program is another way to get out into, mm -hmm. the, um, into the working world. Um, so I wouldn't just say, oh, I don't see it on paper. It's probably not for me. I would definitely ask questions to find out what job experiences are available. Yeah, agree. Absolutely, yeah. right. We really want the, the students to be able to have experience in the areas that they're interested mm -hmm. in, but as, they, as Kimmy was saying earlier, it's really the complex problem solving skills, the collaboration, yeah. the communication, mm -hmm. that's what we're really providing. So they, mm -hmm. those are transferable employability skills. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they're, and they're so critical. They're mm -hmm. so critical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sharon, mm -hmm. um, we'll wrap up with this. What, what would you say to students that, that eh, may, may be interested mm -hmm. in this, may not know they're interested yet? Mm -hmm. You know, so what would you say to students to, to let them know what's out there and what opportunities are available to them around CTE? Well, as we said, talking with their guidance counselor would be a good first step. Certainly they're off, um, able to call my office and so we can get them in contact with a mm -hmm. specific teacher if they have questions, let's say, about hotel and restaurant management. And also I encourage them to consider the summer camp program that we have because yes. that's the chance just in one week to have experience in a career academy that they might be interested in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the website. Right, mm -hmm. you can. We do have a wonderful website. Mm -hmm. uh, we have videos for each of our 20 career academies posted, information about each of the uh, academies posted. And along with the website, we also have the whole course catalog. And we have many, many pages in the high school course catalog mm -hmm. that describe our career academies in depth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cammie, I have a middle school student, and I know if I ask her to go talk to her guidance counselor, mm -hmm. it may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. How can parents start that conversation with the counselors at the school? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, a couple things. Call us. You know, you can call my office, like Sharon said, or mm -hmm. you can call your counselor, your child's um, counselor, and just start asking questions. Um, the other thing is, I mean, we talked about the shadow days for the students. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not a scheduled day, I know the staff here are very welcoming. So if you call and say, hi, my student I think might be interested in this program, call the counselor or the administrator. We can probably set something up with them to okay. get them over here. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is just talk to people that you know. I mean, even if it's not through school, if your student has a particular interest, go help have them do a shadow day at a work experience, mm -hmm. um, a job site somewhere, just to help them see mm -hmm. what it is. Because we're so used to, you know, we sit in school for seven hours a day, and we, we know how to do that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but when students don't see it in real life, it's really hard to see how it might apply to them in their day-to-day -day work. So I would say advocate, ask questions, go out and see. Absolutely. Thank you both for joining me today. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a deeper look at the career and technology education offerings related to cybersecurity.
So the great thing about CTE as a whole, especially the early college program in cybersecurity, is that it specifically addresses the need of the workforce in this region. The grant that was written to start the early college program was specifically written to address the need. Um, so the students that, because they get all these great hands-on experiences, they're able to, again, just kind of, they can finish high school and they don't even need to finish their associates if they don't want to. They're able, to, because they have at least two industry recognized certifications when they finish that first, that 12th grade year slash their first year at HCC, they're able, if they want to, to assimilate directly into the workforce. If they do choose to finish that associate's degree at HCC one year after graduating from high school, they have um, the opportunity to make anywhere from sixty dollars to $80,000 a year in the field of cybersecurity. The skills that they're doing today, like there's there's kids that I could hire today at my at my work, that, that the kids that they're, they've learned from the class here, um, it's it's real world things that they wouldn't even learn in college, right? So having the ability to do, you know, learn Kali Linux and Python scripting and stuff like that, that's having that um, at, uh, at 15, 16 years old is a significant uh, heads up over anybody else. And, I, I, and we did this type of work in other high schools as well, and they just, the difference in, in skills and abilities are it's pretty significant. Uh, yeah, basically every other week or so we come in and work with the students and try and get them to do some hands-on cybersecurity activities. Uh, anything from just learning basic Linux stuff to uh, coding in Python or mapping out networks, things like that, basic cybersecurity skills. Uh, but we feel that hands-on is kind of the way to go. It gets them excited about things, gets them more excited about learning, um, specifically with regards to cybersecurity. And it's actually been quite an experience for me. They've taught me from how to fix computers to actually setting up a virtual environment, which is, I think, pretty cool. So the cybersecurity program, or early college program in the era, at the RL, is influenced me because it taught me, all right, not everything is going to be handed to you. You have to study, you got to work hard, you have to make sure, uh, that you get the networking skills that you need. So it taught me a lot about networking. And for me, I was always a shy guy. I never liked to <laughs> really talk. But through this program, I just had to talk more. I had to be in front of the public more, which is a key aspect, I think, of this program. In the career research and development course, they really work on developing those soft skills that they need in order to succeed in that environment. Then they take the classes in 11th grade, the Howard Community College cybersecurity courses, and they obtain at least one or two industry recognized certifications. Those certifications then allow them to go into Secure Innovations and they're able to actually um, apply the skills that they've learned in the classroom in that work environment. That allows them to literally be able to walk into whatever work environment they choose and be prepared because they've already done it in the classroom, so it's not new for them. You know, these are the kids that are going to be protecting our 401ks 20 years down the road, right? I mean, that's what they're going to be doing in 20 years. They're going to protect, be protecting our 401ks, our healthcare information, um, the infrastructure, um, the, the government, everything. And it's, I think it's really important to get them started young with these skills so that by the time they graduate college, they're ready to enter the workforce and ready to you know, just get their hands dirty. I mean, I think all of career and technology education gives those students those hands-on experiences that might not be available in a traditional classroom setting. That's the best part of career and technology education, I think. And that allows students to take what they've learned in the classroom and apply it in a real-world setting. Um, by being able to have not only industry recognized certifications but an internship on their resume at such a young age, they are uniquely qualified to you know, finish the early college program and go out there into the real world and succeed. My next panel is going to delve deeper into a few of the career academies offered at the Applications and Research Laboratory. Joining me are Larissa Siddiqui, the Early College Program and Cybersecurity Teacher, Rhonda Lang, the Hotel and Restaurant Management Chief Instructor, and Jeff Fisher in Health Professions and Clinical Research. So thank you three for joining me today. So Larry, let's start here. If you could just give me an overview of your program. Sure, so the Early College Program in Cybersecurity is a collaboration between Howard County Public Schools and Howard Community College. The students that participate graduate from high school halfway through their associate's degree in cybersecurity. Um, in addition, upon completion of the program, they have three industry recognized certifications. So it's kind of a seamless entree into the field of cyber. That's great, and we're gonna dig in deeper as we move through the, through the interview. Uh, Rhonda, talk, talk about your academy. 
My academy is the Hotel and Restaurant Management Academy, mm -hmm. and um, our academy is based on two curriculums that were founded by two of the biggest uh, hospitality organizations in the United States, the American Hotel and Lodging Association and the Restaurant Association, or National Restaurant Association. So my students get a very broad view of the entire hospitality industry uh, with a focus on restaurant management and hotel management. And when they leave my academy are able to jump into the world of work or go to a post-secondary school specializing in hospitality. And if you work in the applications and research laboratory, you can smell the delicious smells <laughs> coming from down yes. the hall in Rhonda's area. Yes, Every we do a lot of hands-on labs in our commercial kitchen. That's great, that's great. Okay. Jeff, talk about your academy. So my academy is the Academy of Health Professions, mm -hmm. and so we prepare our students for um, a career or pathway in healthcare, um, and that can take them in a variety of different paths, um, from physical therapy to emergency medicine to uh, nurse practitioner. Uh, we certify our students in a number of areas, and we really prepare them for uh, those uh, secondary skills and secondary schools they want to go to. And, and I want to ask each of you the, the same question. We'll, we'll stay with Jeff here. When students complete your academy, are they able to step into the world of work, or are they able? Are there um, advanced education opportunities for them? Where, what's their path after your academy? Well, I have students that are interning right now, and some of them are actually hired currently as, as students to work in their facility um, as PT aides. Um, oh, but wow. typically... Like a they, paid internship type? Um, it's, it's a paid position. The internships aren't paid, but it's a paid, paid uh, position that they get hired um, because students. they've done well as interns, uh, and they're currently there. Um, but a lot of our students will go on to secondary education. Um, uh, some of our students will come out with um, national certifications that will allow them to work um, in the field um, at a national level. So uh, some come out with the ability to do that. Wow, that's great. Rhonda? Um, my students uh, can actually, while they're in high school, I mean, my program prepares them to step right into a restaurant mm -hmm. or a hotel at the entry level. Mm -hmm. And many of my students work at fast food places starting okay. in their high school career. So this gives them a step up to get a job like while they're in high school. I also, part of my certifications entail internships. So I have students who are working in fine dining restaurants you know, during their time in my program and or some of the local um, family dining restaurants and they uh, are paid internships typically. They don't have to be, but right now, for example, I have one student working at the Elkridge Furnace Inn, mm -hmm. and I have one working at Ellicott Mills Brewing, who are both doing 400-hour internships and who are getting paid to do that. Wow, that's great. It is wonderful. And you've got those relationships with these restaurants I built? I do, I do, because I've had students in the past at Elkridge Furnace Inn. I also have a relationship with the Hilton Garden Inn um, over by Victoria's Pub, mm -hmm. and I've had students who do internships there for a different certification. That's great. It is. Now, Larie, your, yours is, your answer is probably a little more complicated. <laughs> right, so talk about what students are doing after your program. Sure, so the way that the program is designed is that actually after they complete high school, mm -hmm. they have those 30 college credits, but then in addition, they already have two out of the three industry recognized cybersecurity uh, certifications. So they have a few different options. Once they graduate from high school, they can go find a job. Um, and a lot of cybersecurity firms are open to hiring students that don't have a college degree yet because they're looking to shape their mm. workforce from the ground up. And then the great part about that is oftentimes students can then find um, a work site that will actually pay for them to finish their college degree. So that's one option. Mm -hmm. the second option is they can complete that one more year at Howard Community College and then they have their Associates of Arts, the three certifications, and they can go either right into the workforce or transfer to a four-year uh, university, whatever they decide to do. Um, the majority of early college program students do decide to complete their Associates at Howard Community College only because, um, if nothing else, the cost savings is so immense sure. for them. Sure. What I heard from all three of you is options. They have mm -hmm. options when they complete your program, and that's great. That's important. Um, but, Larry, let's dig a little bit deeper. Um, cybersecurity is an increasingly popular field to get into. There's a, it's a high need area. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in your academy that is preparing students for that high need? 
So aside, obviously, from the great partnership that we have with the community college that provides, you know, the yep. classes in the field of cybersecurity, we have um, an advisory board that is, you know, kind of tasked with supporting the students and mentoring the students through the program. So just like Rhonda mentioned, she has the relationships with the different organizations locally. Mm -hmm. Same thing, right? We have um, so many cybersecurity firms just here in Howard County and surrounding areas that are interested in the opportunity to shape their future workforce, right? So it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. Um, so those advisory board members are typically CEO level and they come in about four times a year and they work one-on-one -on -one with the students, they develop the relationships, but then they also get to see, you know, how great the program is and the skills that the students are developing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and those are my direct lines into internships. Um, so I've had students with paid internships at Tenable Network Security, um, which you know is the fastest growing cybersecurity firm here in Howard County, okay. um, as well as other firms. You know the advisory board is growing as the program is growing, mm -hmm. so it's you know we, we kind of do that same thing with the local impact. You mentioned in a previous response that students leave your program with two of the three certifications. Mm -hmm. What are those two certifications? Sure, it's the Test Out Network Pro certification and the CompTIA Network Plus certification. And then if they stay that thir that last year at Howard Community College, then they also get the CompTIA Security Plus. Okay, so let's um, let's also dig a little deeper into the relationship with Howard Community College. Okay. Um, what, what, well, just describe the relationship. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, the Community College is very, very, you know, invested in this program. Um, they put forth an immense amount of resources to ensure that the students are college ready. Mm. Because by the time the students reach their 12th grade year, they're actually spending the majority of the day at Howard Community College taking classes both in general education as well as in the field of cybersecurity. So ensuring that students are college ready, you know, especially in math and English because mm. they're taking community college math and English courses, um, it, you know, is a focus of this program. So lots and lots of support services for the students that need it. And then in addition, just making their facilities available to the students. They open it up and let the students come, you know, do a boot camp over the summer so the students become more comfortable on campus as well as, you know, learning to navigate the tutoring resources and admissions and advising and just taking advantage of all the perks of being a college student. Sure. To get into your program, are there any academic prerequisites that, th that the students need? Nope. There is not. Um, you do have to maintain a certain GPA level in order to be duly enrolled in Com Howard Community College and mm -hmm. HCPSS courses. But um, other than that, you know, there's no prerequisites to starting the career research and development class with me in 10th grade. Good. 10th grade? Yes. Okay. Rhonda. Yes. What are some of the career interests of the students that are in your res uh, hotel and restaurant management academy? Oh, my academy? goodness. Well, um, quite a few. Of course, we have a lot of students who aspire to be chefs. You know, that's one of the big draws for them mm -hmm. is, you know, the cooking aspect. But as I said at the beginning, um, you know, my program focuses on the hospitality umbrella, which covers a lot more than just restaurants and hotels. But some want to work, you know, at the front desk of a hotel or become managers. Hmm. I have a student now who's at Alabama State uh, for event planning. I have students who also, um, you know, want to be a chef in a variety of other areas besides restaurants as well. Um, you know, a big uh, area now in event planning is also. Um, areas like sports event planning. Okay. A lot of the big culinary schools and hospitality schools have broadened their um, curriculums to uh, enhance, you know, all the new trendy areas that, you know, I mean, my industry is huge. Yeah. So the kids, you know, want to do a variety of things, which is nice. What kind of certifications are they working towards? In my program, we have three certifications. Um, the first certification, they can actually get their junior year, about halfway through the year. Actually, they just sat for it in my level one class. It's called ServeSafe, which is uh, a nationally recognized um, safety and sanitation certification mm -hmm. that is used throughout the industry. All restaurants have to have at least one ServeSafe certified person on shift. So if my students get the certification, uh, the first year they're in the program, if they go for a job and somebody else has similar qual uh, you know, qualifications and they have the certification, they will nine times out of ten get that job over mm. that other person. Uh, 
Then the two uh, other certifications are um, certifications they could get for successfully completing two years of my program and passing national exams each year plus doing internships. One is called ProStart and it's through the National Restaurant Association again. Uh, which is focused on the restaurant industry side, mm -hmm. and the other one is called uh, HTMP, Hospitality Management and Tourism Program, through the American Hotel and Lodging Association. So students that are interested in that side, the hotel side, can get a certification as well. Larie mentioned that they enter her program in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. D when do they enter your program, and are there any 11th. prerequisites? Uh, 11th grade and no prerequisites. They mm -hmm. can just come in. And we, too, also have dual enrollment credits with HCC as well in my program. Oh, okay. Yes. Very good. Yes, they can uh, get six credits for I'm completing my program successfully. I'm seeing a trend here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff, do you have any ties with HCC in your program? We do. We do. We work very Look closely with uh, HCC and our Certified Nursing Assistant Program, mm -hmm. uh, also along with uh, our Clinical Research Program and our EMT Program, so all of them. And mm -hmm. uh, our students actually, upon uh, finishing the EMT Program, can get uh, a paid, uh, their, their paramedic program paid for at Howard Community College by the Howard County Fire Department. Wow. So fully paid for program there. Um, we do have, uh, some of our students will qualify after finishing two years of our program for credits towards, uh, for credits from Howard Community College uh, for entry level health sciences courses. Let's keep going in that direction. What are some of the certifications that, that your students are working towards and then where do those certifications lead them after high school? What mm -hmm. are their options? Well, we like to certify a lot, all of our students in CPR and first aid, mm -hmm. um, things that they can use daily um, as, as citizens, whether they continue in our academy or not. Uh, we also certify our students in airborne and bloodborne pathogens and HIPAA protocol, which is the Health Insurance Portability mm -hmm. and Accountability Act, which is really important. Um, but then uh, the senior year, we have uh, some really big certifications from the Board of Nursing, which is the Certified Nursing Assistant Program, which some students can take that and have a career for their entire lives, um, assisting individuals in um, assisted living homes or hospital settings. Uh, then they also can qualify for the geriatric nursing assistant uh, certification. Uh, then we certify our students um, or we allow them to take the EMT Academy where they can, after completion of that and completion of their ride-alongs, they can sit for the national certification for emergency medical technician program. Mm. Um, we prepare them to uh, mainly uh, go out into the working world with those national certifications, but also uh, propel them towards uh, their post-secondary education. Uh, whether that is a two-year degree or a four-year degree or a doctorate, which is a long degree, um, yeah. <laughs> or a medical doctor. Uh, so we prepare them for, for those areas. Options. Options, a ton of options. That's great. Yeah. Um, I, asked, I asked Lurie and Rhonda about prerequisites. It seems like science and math may, may be important in your industry. Are there any academic prerequisites? Yeah, for the Certified Nursing Assistant Program, since it's a very challenging and rigorous program, mm -hmm. uh, it is a biology, um, a C average in biology and algebra one to get into the program, okay. C average in those two. What kind of hands-on real world experiences are your students receiving in your program? Yeah, so um, at the beginning, we do a lot with vital signs, infection control, and CPR, and mm -hmm. first aid. So um, being able to assess a patient when they need to, uh, being able to assess an emergency situation and provide services that way. Uh, then we go ahead and progress into more uh, specific tasks. Um, so for our CNAs, they do a lot of uh, personal care, whether that's brushing teeth, uh, feeding, uh, giving baths. Uh, to um, the physical therapy area where they're walking patients through exercises, helping them ambulate with canes or crutches and wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. um, some of our dental students will go ahead and work with some of our models and, and do different procedures uh, on, on some, of our, some of our equipment. Okay. Uh, so it, it's a variety and we really want to meet our students uh, at their interest and provide that experience from EKG testing to um, you know, manipulating cardiac arrest and things like that. Well, wow. that's great. Um, Larry, we got into this a little bit earlier, um, but I just want to paint the clear picture. How do students apply for your program? And is there an age or year in school in which they must do so? Sure. So they need to in ninth grade. Um, I definitely encourage them to attend a shadow day. 
um, that we host at the ARL just, you know, so they can get a taste of what the program is like. Mm, that's um, good. But they need to let their guidance counselor know in ninth grade that they are interested in joining the early college program. That is what they, you know, that's kind of the application process, just like any ARL academy, mm -hmm. essentially. Rhonda, how do students get into hotel and restaurant management? Um, if they have an interest in it, again, you know, they can start in 11th grade. So as Larie, you know, said, it's a good idea for the students to come to one of the shadow days. Mm -hmm. we, we typically get a lot of interest on the info nights of uh, students who are uh, coming out of middle school and maybe in ninth or 10th grade already. And so they come and, you know, to the academies to hear about them. And, and of late, I've had very full sessions uh, of students interested in it. Um, but typically they just have to, you know, by 10th grade, uh, want to be in the academy and sign up during their 10th grade for the following year for 11th grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, health professions seem so broad. There's so many opportunities. How do students get involved? Uh, <coughs> students will get involved, they'll apply their 10th grade year, and then 11th grade they'll be in our, our um, 11th grade program, which is exposing them to a number of careers um, that they might have never heard of before, um, medical careers and medical terminology that's very new to them. And then their senior year, um, they would go ahead and choose a specialty program. Uh, and then they could also um, enjoy internships at a number of clinics. So mm -hmm. if a student was interested in um, becoming a dentist, they could go to a local dental office. If they wanted to do physical therapy, we'd get them an internship at a physical therapy clinic. We have students at Howard County, um, or Howard, Commun Howard County General Hospital, uh, interning alongside a number of individuals from nurses to uh, PAs and uh, to physicians. So we try to get them all the, that type of exposure their senior year. You're, you're providing so much for your students and your programs to me really seem to epitomize that college and career readiness, right? You're preparing students um, not just to go into further education, though that you are, mm -hmm. um, but also the world of work. And so I'd really like to go down the line for the last question, we'll start with Jeff, and talk about some of the things, because we, we've talked about the skills that they're receiving, but there's, there's all these other skills and attributes over here, right? We call them soft skills a lot of times. So if we're thinking about preparing students for, for life ready, how is that happening beyond just the abilities and health professions in your programs? Well, we really like to stress our students about professionalism. They're going into a hospital setting where they're dealing with sometimes life or death. And so yep. they need to be able to be present in those situations and be professional, uh, holding themselves uh, to a high standard that healthcare uh, employees are held to is very important. Um, so dependability. Um, some of these hospitals depend on our students uh, as interns to go ahead and do rounds uh, with some of the mm. techs or some of the nurses uh, to provide restocking of carts. So we really want them to understand that, that aspect of dependability, of teamwork, and clear communication with teachers, with their mentor, and with their, um, their internship site. Rhonda, I, I'd guess that a lot of the same skills. Oh, I concur totally with Jeff. Yeah. Uh, you know, in my uh, area too, you know, my students have to wear a uniform every day when they're in the kitchen. You know, they have to wear a chef coat, a mm -hmm. chef hat, and be prepared every day to go into, you know, the kitchen lab setting. Also things like, you know, we go on field trips and they have to dress professionally, mm -hmm. you know, uh, casual business attire, regular business attire, um, and we have a lot of guest speakers come in and, you know, it's important for them to understand that, you know, they want to be treated like professionals, so they have to have the same courtesies towards, you know, those mm -hmm. professionals that come in. So, um, you know, we're teaching them also resume skills and interview skills and yes. things like that. The very beginning of their junior year, I start them off with a resume and then we fine tune it throughout the two years that they're in my program, we see how it builds, you know? So professionalism is one of the key areas that mm. they need to, communication skills, all those different things that everybody needs to have. Th they're so critical, business. aren't they? Yes, on a daily basis. And the more opportunity, <laughs> it, it, look, we can all still work on it as well. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Lori, what, what are the, some of those skills that the cybersecurity students are taking away? So when the early college program was kind of imagined, they actually built career research and development, which is a class that's offered 
all over Howard County Public School mm. System, but they built that into the program, and that is a soft skills development course where, you know, and it's especially relevant for these students as they're accelerating their college, you know, education. So, you know, everything that both Rhonda and Jeff already mentioned, especially the resume component. Um, I have students build a multidisciplinary portfolio that showcases their skills from technology to communication because, for example, in the field of cybersecurity, no, you know, work is rarely done in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, and so collaboration is a really key component and in order to successfully collaborate, you have to be able to communicate with other people <laughs> um, and articulate, you know, your ideas mm -hmm. in a respectful, you know, manner that, you sure. know, invites that. So, you know, we really drill down on that as well. And, you know, again, with the field trips and guest speakers and the advisory board, all of those, you know, are really kind of continued to drive, drive home for them. Well, all of you do such great work, along with your mm -hmm. colleagues Thanks. here in the Applications and Research Laboratory. Thanks for joining me today. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes our conversation for today. Thank you to Sharon Kramer, Cami Wagner, Rhonda Lang, Larissa Deakey, and Jeff Fisher for providing the Howard County community with more information of the offerings and opportunities in career and technology education. And thank you to the outstanding team of people we have working here behind the scenes of HCPSS Insight. For more information on CTE programs and career academies, please visit our website at www.hcpss.org. So on behalf of everybody that participated on today's HCPSS Insight, I'm Brian Bassett. Thanks for joining us.